Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. This is where accounting professionals just like you learn all the ways to grow their firm, sharpen their skills, and have consistent increasing sales. I cover topics such as detaching from the emotional side of the sale, having paradigm shifts in the most important part of your business, which is the nucleus of your accounting firm, sales, and how to see an objection really as an asset and stop giving away your time for free for those that don't deserve it. So you can actually get paid your value and your worth and grow your top line revenue. You'll learn tips, sales strategies, as well as hear from personal interviews from successful accounting professionals. This podcast will show you exactly the blueprint on how to create the firm and life of your dreams full of abundance. Welcome back to another amazing episode here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. Our special guest is a CPA owns an accounting firm, been in business since 1998. It's called Small Office Solutions, LLC. And our special guest is Wendy Hall. She's also a graduate student of our eight-week sales mastery training here. She's in our accountability group. She is a star student. And Wendy and her team help professional speakers, that's her target niche client, gain clarity over their business, personal finances, so they can spend more time doing the work they love, pay off all their debt, provide more financial stability for their families, and save Boku bucks for their retirement goals. Wendy is also the author of several published articles covering topics from tax planning, business development, and technology. She is also a mastery level profit first professional and has been named as the Milwaukee Magazine Top Wealth Manager for the last four years in a row. But before we welcome Wendy to the show today, because today we are talking about the power of reviews, meaning power of testimonials, I want to share with you the latest and greatest here at the Abundant Accountant Empire, which is the Abundant Accountant Sales app. If you want to start connecting and learn how to turn down lower quality clients and not feel guilty doing that, then this app is for you. If you want to increase your value and confidence with having a done-for-you bulletproof front-end sales process with six steps to enrolling a prospect and have a flow of cash in a cash-flowing firm, then this app is for you. And this app also helps you build the the know, like, and trust factor in a relationship-building structure. So it's all done-for-you process sales front-end system inside the Abundant Accountant sales app. And if you want to learn more, head on over to theabundantaccountant.com forward slash APP. That stands for app. And you get to try it out for two weeks and see how it works for yourself. There's no contract to sign. You can cancel at any time, but I don't think you will because if one client converts, it pays for this whole app for a whole year or maybe two. So check it out, theabundantaccountant.com forward slash app. Now, let's welcome Wendy to the show. Uh, Welcome, Wendy, to the show. Thank you, Michelle. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Thank you so much for being here today. And for everyone listening, you're going to want to have your yellow notepad, your blue pen or black pen ready to take some notes because Wendy today is going to share her success in following some very simple steps and the power of getting reviews. So, Wendy, thanks so much for being here. Uh, can you share with everyone where your firm is and you know what you do? Because uh, that you're you're very similar to everyone listening here. Yeah, so we've been in business for more than twenty years, almost twenty five, and we started out just preparing tax returns, but very quickly moved into uh, consulting, financial planning, investing. Uh, as well as profit first consultations and other business consultations. Awesome. So you just got started in the business. So I'm glad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and and Wendy is also a student of the Abundant Accountant and our eight week sales mastery graduate. And she is just up and up and up, but honestly has been crushing it in getting client testimonials aka client reviews, 
And, and, and today's discussion is about number one, what might be stopping you from asking your clients for a review? Number two, the power of reviews and what it does for not only your own self-esteem, but your staff and others. And number three, how it can give you more credibility, social proof for future clients. So that's what we're talking about today. So thank you so much, Wendy, for taking out the time. I know your time is valuable, but when I saw how many reviews you were able to get and how you implemented it and got past the mental roadblocks that I think a lot of people here listening, I was like, we need to have a discussion on this. So thank you again. All right, well, let's get right into it. So we're talking about the power of reviews. How about you share with me, Wendy, when we started talking about getting client testimonials or client reviews, what was your initial reaction to that request or why you, what would what, what, you just think about it? Uh, my first thought was, oh, do I have to do that? <laughs> I do not want to do that. I don't want to ask people for a review. It's, it, it seems like I'm doing, like I'm imposing on them or I'm asking a favor of them. And honestly, I was a little bit afraid of getting negative feedback. I mean, nobody wants to hear the negative stuff. And I was afraid that that's all I was going to hear was, was complaints and, and uh, just all sorts of bad things I didn't want to know. Yeah. And, and can you share a little bit more in depth? Because I think a lot of accountants, we, th- we feel like we impose on our clients a lot, or we might feel that well, I don't want to ask them for a favor. They're a paying client. How could I do that? You know, because for me, that doesn't, those thoughts don't even cross my mind. (laughs) I'm like, I want to share your success with other people. This is phenomenal. So can you share from, with your hat, right? Being the accountant, the firm, you've had your business 30 years. Some of these clients you've had maybe for six months, five years, 10 years. What has you think that you're imposing on their space or time that you don't want to ask for a favor. And then we'll get into the negative feedback in a second. But what about those first two? So I think the biggest reason that I'm expecting negative feedback is because most of the time when you hear from a client, you only hear complaints. Mm -hmm. You don't usually hear the good things. You hear clients that are complaining something is taking too long or that your fee was too high or they don't understand what's going on. So you only hear the bad things from your clients. Very rarely do you hear the good things from your clients who say, oh, you made it so easier. It was so good. And I think it's just human nature that when we hear the good stuff, we kind of sweep it under the rug and say, oh, well, it's just that one client out of (laughs) 300 or 3000, whatever it is that is so happy with our experience. So it's just human nature to say, you know what, I I think people have to do their tax returns and they have to do some of these things, but they don't like doing it and want to avoid it at all costs. Yeah. And have you had an experience about where a client told you that you were imposing on them? Or have you ever had a client say, you know, why are you asking me for a favor? What about those two? Like, did you actually have that? Or was that just a a thought that you came up with on your own, but it actually never occurred? So it's not true. It was just a limiting belief at that point. You are correct. Oh, I, I am. not okay. hear from any clients who said, when I asked for a review, I did not have anybody come back to me and say, why are you asking me for this? Or why are you asking me for a favor? Or I don't want to do this. If they didn't want to do it, they just responded that they just didn't respond. Or if I asked them uh, in an email for a written testimonial or a a video testimonial, and they didn't want to do it, they just didn't respond. There was no response. So So then you didn't even have that rejection because you just didn't get a response as well. So I think also maybe it's like in the beginning, you're like, Michelle, why do I have to do this? But also it's the fear of being rejected. So not only do we feel we're imposing on them and I don't want to ask them for a favor, they're busy, but I actually don't even want to feel rejected by them because God knows what they're going to say. If I just hear some more negative feedback, I might go crazy. <laughs> and I, I did, I do recall a, a couple times where people made excuse why they couldn't do it, which was just fine, whether like it was a valid excuse or not. 
So I had somebody say, oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm too busy right now. Or, uh, I, um, I just had, I had someone say, I just had eye surgery done. So my eyes don't look right. Or I had somebody say, oh, I'm growing my hair out and I don't want to, it doesn't look right now. So I thought that was very interesting. The, the, uh, objections to the video testimonial because they didn't basically didn't want to be on camera. Yeah. And so just to clear that up, uh, Wendy, well, I, I, I had a suggestion for everybody and for all of you, I, I'm going to put this out there that it's important to get video testimonials and written testimonials with people's photos. That's, that's the ultimate goal. (laughs) (laughs) That's where we want to end up. So people were objecting to your video reviews, probably because they didn't want to hurt your feelings and say, you know what? I hate being on camera. Uh, Cause I think a lot of us, you know, listening right now that just, being on camera is just shocking, even though I think we're all a little bit more used to Zoom these days. But being one on one with a happy client, hearing all this stuff, it it's a lot to even hear the good stuff. And it's overwhelming at times. So I could see that. Uh, so that's interesting. OK, well, this is a case study episode because Wendy went out on the limb and tried something, even though she felt that she was maybe imposing on people, you felt like you were going to be kind of a nag or a bother asking for a favor and probably terrified of hearing any negative feedback. So let's hear about what you did and the the tests that you went through and, and what you did to get reviews. So this year at the beginning of tax season, I decided that I was going to get feedback from every tax client that we prepared a return for. And I knew that I needed to ask a limited number of questions so that they would answer them because nobody wants to answer a long extended questionnaire. And I knew I had to be consistent and not hand pick who I sent the questionnaire to. I needed to send it to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to make sure that my words were such that um, I got feedback that was not only helpful but also then provided for those really desired reviews. And that was, it was a little scary and it was a little intimidating because I I didn't exactly know how that whole process was going to look like. And I was concerned that it was going to take up a lot of extra time on our end to, Mm. to do it, just to send that to every single client every time. Yeah. And, and it's like, you already don't have a lot of time. So where were you going to find the time? to ask for a client reviewer testimonial. So when you got over that mental barrier for you, Wendy, what had you say, you know what, I'm going to make the time to do it. What had that switch go off for you where you said, you know what, this is actually really important and valuable for me to get these desired reviews. Um, I, I knew that I needed to get the testimonials because I was frustrated with the lack of reviews I had on my Facebook page and on my Google page that had one or two reviews on there um, that were starting to get really old. I think I think my Google page had one review on it that was six years old, and my Facebook page had a, a number of really good reviews on it, but they were all really dated. And I think it looks bad, even if um, you have good reviews, if they're outdated. And if you don't have reviews, it makes you wonder how uh, is this person even a valid company that they don't have any reviews to me, that's really suspicious looking. So I knew that I had to do it and I just had to get over the barrier of getting a process in place. Yeah. And I think having a process in place and then knowing how to do it, I'd love for you to share how much time did it really take? Cause the probably thinking of most people right now is Michelle and Wendy, you guys are nuts. I am so busy. Even though I'm frustrated with how dated my reviews are on my Google and Facebook, but how did you even find the time? Can you quantify how much time this actually really took? It probably took me longer to come up with the questions than anything. And you and I worked together on coming up with the questions to ask And I ended up with about six or seven questions on my form that I did in Google Docs and Google Forms. Mm -hmm. 
And that probably took me the longest amount of time was to come up with the questions and create the form. And honestly, altogether, probably took me about two hours. So that's not really a whole lot of time. And to to be a gift to others, since this is all about giving here at the Abundant Accountant Podcast, what do you think out of the six questions are the two most important ones that you would want to share with everyone right now where they could write it down? And if you didn't do anything else except ask your happy clients two questions, what would they be? So of course, the one of the number, the one, number one question that I would ask would be, would it be too cumbersome to provide us with a two to three sentence review of your experience working with us so we can share it with others? Okay. So I hope everyone wrote that down. If not, hit rewind and write it down. That's a very good question. What's the other one if they didn't come up with six and they were only going to ask two questions to people to generate a very good review? And I love the word you used, a desired review, because if they provide it to you, then that's a desired review. I think it's kind of a tie between the other two questions. Okay, we'll Um, do three. We'll give them a bonus. Everyone's getting a bonus today. (laughs) Yeah, let's do two more. Uh, So the other two questions I asked, I asked, what do you like best about the services we provide? And then I asked, how or in what way do you feel we can improve? And I'm curious, why would you ask the third one? From your point of view, why would you want to know the ways you can improve? Because that's another opportunity for you to get some rejection or negative feedback that you get to take in. It's always hard to get good feedback that is that you can turn around and make useful. It's, as you had said, it's hard to know what people are feeling and how they view the process. You come up from a very non-accounting standpoint. So your view, <laughs> do I? Your view you do. <laughs> so your view on how things work and the process is very different than how I look at them. Mm-hmm. I might think that Um, something is very clear and laid out, whereas you might read something and see that it's very confusing because either you don't understand the vernacular or the wording I use isn't clear or I'm using too much jargon or the the technology isn't as easy to use as I, I think it is. And those are just some really good examples. And we are fortunate here in our office to have one of our staff members is a very non-technical person and really helps us as a team reflect on what it looks like from a non-technical viewpoint. So when we're asking questions of our clients, she can say, well, you know what, to me, I don't understand that. That's confusing because she's thinking about it in a different way than we are. Yeah. So you're able to communicate with future prospects at their level in the future by getting this information and ways to improve from people like me who think a lot of the stuff is complicated at times. So no, I think that, I think that's great. And I think those three questions, um, Wendy are perfect ones for anyone who doesn't want to go any further. If you just do those two or three, the, the feedback you're going to hear is incredible. So why don't you share the results of what you did? How many people did you ask? How many new client reviews did you get? What's your Google page up to? What's your Facebook page up to? Because one of the things that I shared with Wendy and she executed beautifully was not only when you request the review, do you get a client review testimonial, but you can also ask them to copy and paste it and put it on their Google page, put it on your Yelp page if you have Yelp, put it on your Facebook page um, and add them to your website. Like you could get a four for one special. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we sent out the request to almost every tax client. And I say almost because my goal was to send it to every tax client. But there were a couple of tax clients. I thought, you know what? we're going to fire this client yeah. this year. So I don't really want to hear their feedback. <laughs> yeah. How many total clients, what percent are you going to fire this year? Because I think that's just another little tidbit. We always want to be getting rid of clients who don't fit or suit us because you don't want to hear their feedback. So if you don't want to hear someone's feedback, then it's probably a good idea to let them go. 
uh, we typically fire one to two percent of our clients every year. And we just had that vote today. <laughs> oh, nice. Perfect. How timely. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we asked about 260 of our clients for their feedback. And we sent them an email that was basically a canned email after the comp full completion of their tax returns. Basically, two sentences. Thanks for your your business. Uh, if you could complete this short two minute survey and then a link to the form. Thanks for working with us this year. Boom. That was it. So it was very short, sweet. And we did send the email from our, one of our generic emails. So it didn't come from me. It didn't come from our tax preparer. It didn't come from a person. It came from mm -hmm. our, uh, our team email, which I think helped because it didn't, imply that the email was coming from a specific person or looking for feedback from a specific person or going to be read by a specific person. I think it gave that arm's length distance mm -hmm. on the, the, the feedback. Got it. And you got how many new reviews? Um, we got responses from 64 of those uh, emails that we sent out, which is about a 25% response rate. And we did not send out any reminders or any second requests. I was pretty happy with that, that we got mm -hmm. so many people to respond. I was really excited. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And because Wendy knows me so well, we're not going to stop there. Now is a great time to send the other 196 people. Uh, did you miss my email? Email. And let's try to get a few more because sometimes people are so busy in their inboxes. I've seen some people's inbox with like 15,000, 30,000 unread emails, which I'm sure a lot of you listening either have that or you're OCD like me where you can't, you can't have a day without going through every email and cleaning it up and having it organized. So Wendy, that's my little challenge to you. We can work on that next and sending a follow-up, but a 25% response rate with all these client reviews, what what was the most eye-opening review that you got off the top of your head that you had no clue, like you were shocked by it? Actually, I was really shocked by one review from a client who I thought was not very, very enthused with our services, who, mm. who maybe did not seem very happy. And yet their response was stunningly complimentary. Wow. Can, do you get to read it to us? <laughs> um, I can. Okay. Yeah. Let's. I I want to hear it, and I know everyone listening wants to hear it too, because I think sometimes you think when a client's not engaged with you, they don't respond to you. It's very transactional that they probably don't appreciate you, right? The ones that are probably further distant away that you don't hear from very often. My guess is that you think they don't really care. They don't really value you. They don't appreciate you. So when you get one, like, is that what happened with this person? Is that what you felt? Yes. I okay. thought that they were unhappy with, um, with how, how many questions we asked and the time that it took to prepare because they, they have K-1s and combined 1099s. And it just takes a long time to prepare the returns because it takes a long time to collect all the information. Mm -hmm. So I always felt like we were bothering them and asking them for something new or they weren't providing it. And, and so I always felt like they were frustrated with us. Mm -hmm. But I can read the review to you. All right. Let's hear it. Uh, they said, we have been working with small office solutions for many years and Wendy and her team do a very thorough job every time. They always know all the latest tax changes and nuances and answer all of our questions in addition to making sure we are informed and prepared. Yeah. And and that you thought was a 180 opposite of what you were going to hear. Yeah. In fact, that was one of those that I, I it was earlier in the process and I had to kind of force myself to send that email to them because I was afraid of how they were going to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could. I can definitely see that. Like, I don't want to send, I don't want to hit send. I need to not send this one. I rather not know anything. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. That's exactly right. I I, I was really <laughs> hesitant to to hear back from them. Um, and I thought, nope, I told myself I was going to send this to every single client and that's what I'm going to do. So with the 64 responses you got, what did you think? What did you feel? What were you surprised by? Share with us that because I think for everyone listening and actually before we do that, what roadblocks did you have to really overcome to just do this? to set out the time, create the process and say, you know what, I'm just going to trust Michelle on this one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you were definitely pushing to, to do this. And you think, um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, and I, I, just like I ask my clients to trust me that I am the professional, I was pushing myself to trust you, the professional Mm -hmm. And let you guide me in the right direction to go. After all, that's part of that's part of the process. And if you're working with someone, uh, whether you're working with an attorney or a marketer, if you are spending money to have them work with you, then why would you not take their advice? Yeah, I think I think that's kind of turning the tables because that's exactly what I ask of my clients. If you are spending the time and energy for me to to consult with you and give you direction and advice, mm-hmm. why would you not take that advice? Yeah, why are you it. spending time with me then? Yeah, and I think that's that's a huge one. And I think for I'm not going to be able to push everyone listening today, but I am going to invite you to experience what Wendy experienced. See what happened to her and her, you know, she got 64 new reviews. How many of those went to Google and Facebook and on your website and all that? Because I know you asked them to put it on Google too and Facebook. Yep. I, what, for those who actually gave us a two to three sentence review, because all of the questions in the survey were marked as not required. So nobody had to answer all of the questions. So not everybody gave us a two to three sentence review of the 64 responses of the ones who did respond and gave their name because sometimes they gave us a review and then no name. Mm -hmm. Uh, So of the ones that gave us a review and a name, we then sent to them another email that said, thank you for your review. And would you please also post it on Google or Facebook or Nextdoor, which is another social media site, uh, so that others can help find us. And we did have several people that said, absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. We now have 10 reviews on our Google site. And we have an additional five on our Facebook page. And we have a whopping 12 now on our next door recommendation page. Wow. That's so awesome. Congrats to you. Now, now what else did you learn through the process? Cause I think you had some other learnings, aha moments that you were like blown away by. Um, can you share those? Sure. I was really surprised at at the great positive feedback that we did receive. The reviews were really amazing. And that to me was really very reassuring. It felt really good just to get those reviews, whether I use them anyplace else. It it was a breath of fresh air after a stressful tax season to see such positive things about what we as a team here have done. And it it was such a change from prior years when all we would hear is just the negative feedback. I did share these reviews with my staff mm. and it really, I feel, helped them feel better that we are making a difference in people's lives and are really helping people. Things like SOS is a lifesaver. Um, this company makes everything easy and understandable. Th- these, This feedback that we got just really, I think, made everybody feel better about what we're doing here and that we are succeeding. Yeah. And I mean, I think just the fact that your staff got to see it too. And yeah, it's a breath of fresh air for you. It it's it helps the mood and your spirits. And that probably when you actually are doing client work, your the level of work and enthusiasm has now increased. So 
for you, Wendy, where you were prior to me pushing you, because not everyone listening is going to get the push. What would you say to a colleague who's listening, who's having the thoughts and the blocks you had? They're afraid of getting bad reviews. They, you know, pretty much think that all the clients are just going to be negative or bitch about stuff. They have zero uncertainty on how to ask for a review. If you have that one, you need to hit rewind and write down the three questions Wendy gave you. (laughs) What about having the uncertainty on how to do it? We talked a little bit about that, but all it is is creating a Google form and creating a two sentence email with the link to the form. Or what about the block that I don't have any time? There, you know, I, I don't have time to do this. I don't have a process. I don't even know where to begin. All these blocks that stop that stop everyone listening in their tracks and say, you know what? I'll do it later. What would you say to them now to take action and go get reviews, go get testimonials so you can help more of your ideal clients? Because the reviews give you credibility. It put it it shows that you're the expert in what you do. And it helps other clients know that, I mean, now you don't have a Google page with a bunch of old reviews. You now have instead of one, you have 10. On Facebook, you have five. On Nextdoor, you have 12. I mean, now you're more visible to prospects. What would you say to someone who's in your shoes six, nine months ago? Uh, for, For anyone that prepares tax returns, at the very least, Every year you have to update your processes and your questions and review things with your clients that you didn't have to do before. So this year was a great example. We had a lot to deal with, with new tax acts, new tax laws, stimulus payments, things that we had to be sure to ask the the clients in advance. So every year that beginning of tax season time is a review of what needs to be done and what needs to move forward and change for the current tax year. Or at the end of the tax year, just like we're at now, you look at what did we do, what needs to be changed, what needs to be improved. So this is this and at the beginning of tax season are the perfect times to implement this and get this going. It allows you to set that process in place. And once you get the process in place, I think that overcomes all of those excuses that you have. And those are the the blocks. It's the getting the, the form set up, getting the email, the canned email. It doesn't have to be customized for every client. And if you use something, uh, a, a format such as Quick Parts and Outlook or templates to create those emails, it takes literally seconds to create those emails and send them out for each client. So setting it up is the hard part. And it's not (laughs) that long. It just takes a couple hours. And now is the time to do it. Once you've got those that system in place, then you just need to have it as part of your process. When you do the process of creating a tax return or of onboarding a client, there's a, a process and steps that you take, you just have to insert that step. Once you have sent your client their first financials, then you and then you send them the request for the review. It's just one of those next steps. And and like you said, now is a great time. You get the opportunity to set aside the time. Is there anything else, Wendy, that you would share with a colleague listening who is good at taking action and will create the time, but really what's blocking them is the fear the, I don't want to hear from these clients. I don't want, what if they ask for a refund? All those negative thoughts. Anything you would share that helped, you know, what helped you get over that hurdle? Uh, Well, I don't think this got, helped me get over the hurdle other than Uh you pushing me. (laughs) But, (laughs) but I think my experience showed that uh, when clients fill out this survey and I ask them what went well and what they like about our team, I think it really reinforced their own good experience with us. Yeah. If you sit down to go, oh, that's right. They did provide me with a lot of feedback or they were very patient with me and helped me collect the information that I need or their communication was very clear. I think it really reinforces the the good experience that they had. And that's always a good thing. If, if yeah. tax season especially is so stressful on people, for them to realize that, hey, you know what? They did really make it easy for me. 
that just means they're going to come back again or have us more top of mind when somebody else is looking for assistance with their taxes. Yep. And that's a referral discussion that we can have on another day because I do push really hard to get referrals. So, well, thank you, Wendy, so much for taking out the time to share your your case study, the power of getting reviews, not only for yourself, but for your staff and your team. And, you know, it, it's a win, 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 win all around. Is there anything else, any last words of wisdom that you want to share with a colleague of yours listening right now? Yeah, I do want to say one last thing. I am so happy that now I have my page of testimonials up on my website because Ooh. every time I get a new client and they are waiting for an appointment time or they are hesitant to move forward, I just quickly send them a link to our page and say, hey, while you're waiting or while you're thinking it over, here's what our other clients have to say, or here's how our other clients have experienced working with us. And I just send it out. It's just such a powerful thing to have available, especially when I have my clients' pictures up there. That was kind of a weird thing to do, but <laughs> asking for the clients to provide a picture and being able to have their picture on the website with their testimonial, I think really makes a difference. What was weird about that? Share with us what is weird about asking for the photo because every single person listening right now is thinking, yeah, that's strange. Michelle, you want us to ask for a review and get a photo? What what was strange about asking for the photo in addition to the written review? Um, I think about it from somebody else's point of view. If my dentist were to ask me for a review and then a picture of me, I would be a little <laughs> um, hesitant. I, I don't know that I would want my picture up in some place that I don't have control over. Yeah. But maybe that's just how I feel about it. I know that a lot of the younger generation is happy to have their picture all over the place. Yeah. But uh, and I, I only uh, of the, of all the responses I received, only about half actually offered up their picture, uh, which is fine. I, I didn't have a problem, but it was also kind of fun to see some of my clients in a very casual setting. Yeah, with uh, their some family a, or dog or game, kids. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that's 32 photos that now you have with testimonials and 32 people that thought it wasn't weird. If we think it's weird, it's just our own weirdness. It's It's our own belief that that's bizarre and that's strange. But 32 people, Wendy didn't think it was weird at all. So kudos to you for making the ask because you have a 50-50 chance, right? When we don't ask, you're going to get no photos. That would have been 100% no. But because you asked, you actually got 50% to give you a picture. That's right. And you bring up a really good point. You just shoved my own theory back in my face because oh, I, I always... I always tell my kids, if you don't ask, the answer is already no. So yeah. why would you not ask? Exactly. And we're going to end it right there. Thank you so much, Wendy, for joining us here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. This was awesome. Thank you again. And, um, and, and I can't wait to get the follow-up stats. We'll have to do a follow-up episode on the 260 or 265 minus the 64 we're going to send a follow-up email to them and ask for a review. We're going to get these up even more. So thank you for being here with us. Thanks, Michelle. What an amazing episode with Wendy. Oh my gosh, so much good, so much goodness here. But I want to share the one thing that she shared because I know I can't push all of you. Well, some of you I can, but not everybody. And just like Wendy said, you know, if we don't make the ask, you're going to 100% never get anything from anybody. But if you ask for testimonials or reviews from half your clients, you're going to get it. And I was doing, um, I have this new little series on my YouTube channel called Tesla Talks, where I interview Tesla owners in their car while they're sitting and charging their cars. And I met a woman last night. She's a real estate agent. And here was her tip and secret of advice for brand new entrepreneurs, business owners. And uh, her name's Lonnie. And Lonnie said, her success comes because she's able to have her clients trust her. So Wendy mentioned that too. Wendy said, you know, I yes, I pushed her, but she said, you know what? As a professional, I need to have my tax clients trust me in what I'm doing. And 
if Wendy's a student of mine, she has to trust what I'm saying is going to work. Now, you might think it's terrifying and scary and all of those thoughts, which is fine. But in her case, she got the results. In Lonnie's case, she's like a top real estate agent at Coldwell Blank Banker here because she has her clients know, like, and trust her to a point where she gets them a good deal. And the sales process for buying a house can be a total nightmare if you don't have the right person representing you. So the whole point of what I'm trying to say is that trust Wendy today. Write out the questions she told you. We came up with them together. But even if you just ask two of the three or all three and put it in a Google form today and just send them out to all of your clients that you had this tax season or if you do tax planning, for all the tax plans that you did this year, I guarantee you're going to get at least half of them to respond. So that's that. And if you need help doing that, um, I'm going to actually have an asking for referral uh, resource within my new app. It's called the Abundant Accountant Sales App. You can learn more over at theabundantaccountant.com forward slash app. But if you don't want to create anything that Wendy and I talked about, it's already done for you inside my app. We are building out the referral request and we're building out the testimonial request. But as far as the front end sales process to get a client engaged with you and enrolled with you, the, the sequence is done. The follow up emails are complete. Everything is done for you. Bulletproof front end client experience that turns all those prospects into clients. So you have a cash flowing firm. And if you want to spend less time trying to manage what leads are where in the process, then this is a great tool for you. And the best part is you get to try it for two weeks. No, no commitments, no nothing. You can cancel at any time. No contracts to sign because that's how awesome this tool is. I spent like, I don't know, four to six months putting in all the stuff. So I've worked on it with a company called Rapid Funnel. But if you go to the abundantaccountant.com forward slash app, you will learn more. You will have a bulletproof process so you don't have to think about what to do and the next steps for your sales. And you can start gaining more revenue and, and stop spending so much time fiddling around who, which clients you have to call, who contact you do through your website today, who do I have to follow up with? It's already done for you. So once again, theabundantaccountant.com forward slash app. And I will see you all in the next episode.